Um, so what we introduced yesterday at the keynote really is, is kind of a new face of the course, right? So what you're used to is So the 800 series is going to live its life with some efforts, but the new models of the CA3000, the CA2000, the CA1000 is going to be right? This is kind of the new face of so, Sony. So, um, whereas, for example, the 800 series really threw everything in the kitchen sink at not necessarily the problem, but the questions, the issues. I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to have this. Oh, hell, you can't do this without this. You got to throw that in, right? And it did it well. Right? It had like, figurability built in. Uh, in many ways, it was almost too much. So the car now. You got a 2014 Camaro SS. All the bells and on the other hand, they have 2014 Camaro Z28, street legal race car. Right, which would you rather have? Okay, well that's the 1500. I'm going to introduce you to the CA3000. Okay. So that's, for example, the CA3000. Now, when I say that this kind of draws a line in the sand, really, this is kind of a hard line. And anything that comes from now on will be significant improvement, too. We really focused on the integrate, so you. This product will not be assorted or distributed in all areas. I mean, when I say that, I'm sorry. That's yet to be determined, but it's definitely an assembly required piece. This is not a retail, I'm sorry, Best Buy, um, uh, you know, John Doe Electronics, right? This is not that level piece. Where's the 1500? This piece is designed for the integrator, integrator margin, right? That's what you want backside. Build quality, everybody wanted that. Check. Electronics, check. So video, sound quality, check. Got it. Okay. Reliability, right? If you want to put it in a rack and you forget it. Okay. Cover it. Now, this conversation about, eh, you know, ease of use. I want to be able to install this. Silly. Um, some things popped up in the conversation. Luckily, we caught it. So, here you go. CA 3000 yes. And the face, it's a new face. It's very, very clean. I like that. Nice cover plate covers up everything. Yeah, nice cover plate, which you can leave with the customer. But the fact is, is that this is where things are different from the So, let's talk about the softer side of things and then we can you probably already seen the harder side, right? Okay. So, um, just to allude to that, so, you know, nothing sucks worse than a jack panel that you can't use. Um, everything's scattered everywhere. Um, you've got lines crossing, you power your signal, right? It's basic formalities that we've been taught. Right, so don't do this. Don't do this. Um, consistency across the line, the 3000, the 2000, the 1000 looks the same. I was just talking to a bunch of guys and I said, you know, it was funny because I was actually installing a piece just for use here at the show. And I had my hand on the back and I could actually feel where I was going. So it was like, okay, there's your HDMI. Boom. Done. There we go. So what's the main differences between the three? And the so that's the functionality. So software-wise, there is no difference. 4K upscaling, throughput, HDC two. That's it. Um, the big, big difference is like the matrix switch, the 84 gigabit Ethernet, which is on the BOE, right, BOE for the 3000, right, um, those are the big differences, the wattage, 20 watts, 100 watts, uh, sorry, let's, let's talk about the softer side of things, you've already seen the harder side, so there's three ways you can skin this game. Um, you've got the face. So, incidentally, here's the on screen view. It's very similar to the consumer piece. But once you peel back that veneer, you actually start to see where things are different. So, I can navigate easily with the five way key. Right? You go one foot set up. I can select my icons, I can select what I want, you can rename things. I don't want to call that game, I want to call it Slay Station. Okay. There you go. 
punch that in. Yeah. And then you can hide them and you can also show them on the main screen. Exactly, show hide. There's so many different things you can do. You know, I can select which input it is, I can assign what I do there. That's a lot more uh, flowing than yeah, the Yeah, totally. Like, yeah. remember back in the day on the ES pieces when you're trying to... Uh, yeah. <laughs> but it's even better than with the, the original crossbar. You know, totally, yeah. totally. Um, so, there's the face panel. Likewise as well. So what's the IP address on that uh, on that piece? Well, I don't know. I wrote it down. Where is it? I'll tell you what. Here you go. That's great. Here's your IP address. And the MAC address. Now, right, MAC address. Drop that in my browser. And here's the second one. So now I can go in my browser and I can say, okay. I can set everything up, I can configure everything, I can calibrate, you know, in the context of, instead of being in the closet and spending five days in the closet trying to make sure everything's good, mm -hmm. I can actually sit there where I can confirm that what is what, right? that this is what it is, okay, yeah, that's six feet of distance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's basically, actually, I'm going to do this because I can still my remote, but that's, you know, extension, you name it, extension, yes. It's great, though. so you can completely program it via your network as opposed to doing it from the That's a great feature. So there's, there's a lot of functionality there. I want to show you the remote, too, and I'm going to, I'm going to get it back in just a second. The remote is not a consumer remote. The remote is designed, once again, for you. So the purpose is you won't necessarily leave that line because you'll probably leave them with something a lot sexier or a lot more Um but the point being is that some of the features on the remote are specific to getting, for example, to the input setup, to speaker setup, some things that you use quite frequently when you're working on this and you're really fluffing things and making sure everything gels. Right? I hit button one and I want to do this. Check. Everything is what it should be. You got it. Um, so the remote, hang on just one second, I'm going to go out of front. This is the remote. It's not very sexy, no there's, there's nothing really basic. exciting here yep. yet. But you'll notice a couple of things. So, for example, there's that uh, speaker, speaker setup. setup button. So, for example, I hit it. And right to all the concrete. That's right. great. Let's say, oh, wait, hang on, let's go back to input setup. That's nice. So we've got that now. Okay, so once you've got this plugged in, you've got it basically hooked up, it's powering, it's glowing, it's going, okay, you know where things roughly are. Now let's say it's time to start plugging in peripheral devices, media servers, uh, media sources. Okay, wait a minute, those aren't coming in until tomorrow because there's been a shipping delay or something. Whatever, we thought we had one in stock, we didn't, okay. Well, let's carry on. Let's go ahead and check the picture quality. Okay. So, yep. Oh, that's great. Same thing with speakers. Okay. Let's check it out. I've got a test now, so it'll just you know, obviously right there, right on the tone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you can check and make sure everything works. Granted, final calibration is another story, sure. but at least you know, okay, you know what? That's one less thing we got to worry about. And the box comes, we plug it in, et cetera, et cetera. So, so there's a lot of functionality there. It's really quite nice. Um, you know, multiple ways to skin the cat. We've got the PDF version of the install guide, so that's always handy to have as well. Everything is cross-referenced. So the nice thing is, is that you know what you see, for example, in the menu. You, know, you notice that it's numbered. We're only waiting for it. Everything is numbered. It's also numbered in the documents. So everything cross So you're on the same. Great. Thank you very much. I appreciate everything. Thank you.